Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Holy Quran is the final book and the most updated message sent to all of us by our Creator. In Islamic narrations, we are told that God Almighty sent 1,24,000 prophets and between them he sent about 100 books and among all the prophets the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and on his pure family is the final seal over those prophets then the Holy Quran is the final book and the seal over the past books the purpose of the Holy Quran is to guide us all, to bring us out of darkness towards the light. And when it comes to benefits, there are many. As simple as just looking at the words of the Holy Quran. The Prophet Muhammad says that if you just look at the words of the Holy Quran, God in return would forgive the sins of your parents even if they are disbelievers. Now this is amazing. If I pick up my Holy Quran and I just look at the Holy Words, I do not recite it. In return of this simple act, God willingly, my parents would reap the benefits. This is how amazing it is. Now, another benefit of the Holy Quran comes from listening to these words, listening to the Divine Words. It is said that our ears are one of the pathway towards our heart. So listening to the divine words has a very calming and soothing effect upon us. But when it comes to listening to the Quran, many of people would tell you that when you listen to the Quran, you should only do it when you can give it your complete attention. So listening to the Quran while driving or playing it in your house or at work like playing the, playing the Quran like a background music should not be done because since we are not giving it our attention there is no benefit in it and because there is no benefit there is waste and waste is disallowed in Islam okay but what if we say that such kind of listening would have benefits and mind you not only spiritual benefits, even physical and mental benefits, then should we not do such kind of background listening? Let's make our point. The human mind can be divided into two parts. Conscious mind, subconscious mind. Now especially the subconscious mind, you will find a lot of literature written on it. There are many books as well as articles. In simple terms, conscious mind means being aware, meaning when you are totally aware of the act you are doing, then it is via your conscious mind. And when you do an action but you are not aware about doing it, the action is happening but there is no awareness, then it's the subconscious mind. An internal example would be breathing. Right now, you can become conscious about the way you are breathing but even when you are not conscious subconsciously this is happening externally an example would be learning how to drive when the first time you were learning how to drive you were very conscious about everything that you were doing you could do only one thing at one time but once you've learnt it and that data has been transferred to your subconscious mind now you need not be aware of what you are doing rather you can be driving and at the same time you can be talking to someone you could be whatsapping and there could be many others who can be sleeping and driving as well this is how powerful your subconscious mind is that is why scientists say that 90% of your mind is the subconscious mind. Then there's this famous scientist by the name of Dr. Bruce Lipton. He has measured the speed or the power of the subconscious mind. And he says as compared to the conscious mind, 
the subconscious mind is like a supercomputer. The conscious mind works like a vintage car. Step one, step two, very manual. But the subconscious mind is like a sports car. Zero to 60 in less than five seconds. That's how powerful the subconscious mind is. Now this applies to learning as well. Now this is interesting. Huh? So consciously you can learn something. But even when you are not conscious about something, you may be feeling that you are not giving something your attention. Doctors say even at that time you can be taught something. Meaning when you are not learning it consciously, your mind is being taught. They say that our mind is like a garden and the conscious mind is like the gardener at the gate. He is checking who comes in and what he is planting. But there is another side gate called the subconscious mind through which someone can come into the garden of your mind, plant what he wants to plant and only when you will see the fruits, you will start questioning the roots. That's how the subconscious mind works. Let me give you a couple of researches. The first is a classic. An old woman meets with an accident. When she, she comes back to consciousness, she starts speaking a very unknown language. A professor is called. He says that she is speaking a very, very ancient language. When asked, the old woman said, I have never learnt or heard about this language. Now, when they found out more, they came to know that this woman was working in a theater as a cleaner. And in that theater, there was an artist who was practicing his lines of his play. And in those lines, he had to recite that ancient language. So subconsciously, her mind recorded all those lines. Second research. Let's take this from an Islamic scholar. Ayatollah Hussein Mazari, a very famous Iranian scholar. He was not a writer per se, but he was a very powerful speaker and orator. So whatever he spoke would then be transcripted and be put down in book form. I have this book of his with me called tarbiyat e farzand This book is in the Persian, the Farsi language and this research is from this book. One of his other books has been translated to English which also is a very interesting book. That book is called Islamic Family Life Ethics. It basically teaches you how in everyday life you can apply the religion of Islam. It's a very nice book. Now coming back to his research, Ayatollah Mazari mentions that once there was this girl, this French girl who had to be operated on her brain. A brain surgery was being done. Now during the surgery, when the doctor would touch one of her nerves, she would start reciting the German national song. Now this bewildered them that why is she a French girl reciting the German song? When she, she was asked that where did she learn it? She said she's never heard it before. Now then when they started finding out, they came to know that when this girl was an infant, a baby in the cradle, that was the time of the Second World War. And the Germans had attacked France and when they were passing by the streets, they were reciting the national song and this girl at that age subconsciously recorded that anthem. Ayatollah Madhari was making this point to prove the importance of reciting the azan into the years of the child when the child is born. When the child is an infant, you must recite the azan. That's why the Ayatollah was proving the benefits of that recitation. Okay, so now the simple question. If an old lady can subconsciously, without being aware, while brooming and cleaning, she can learn an ancient language. When a young girl, subconsciously, when she is rocking in a cradle, 
can learn a national anthem of another country then I ask this question that if we listen to the divine words while driving while when at home when the kids are playing or when your wife is in the kitchen or nowadays when you yourself are in the kitchen would not these words have an impact on our hearts and our brain and if your logical answer is yes then why not do it Imam Bakr -Islam says that this Mahi Ramadan is the best season for the Holy Quran and we should make ways through which we can make the best out of this holy book listening to the Holy Quran subconsciously is a very shortcut and easy method to take benefits from this divine guide so until next time take care and happy listening